You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. And now, TSPN News with Tom Slivik. Comprehensive news because in today's world, you need more than just sound bites. TSPN, streaming on the World Wide Web, and now on demand at TSPNTV.com. Hi everyone, I'm Tom Slavik. Welcome to TSPN's News for Today. We're going to start our news with the Board of Supervisor report from Richard Forrester. And yeah, the Supervisor Richard Forrester with your meeting report from Tuesday, August 28th for the Board of Supervisors. I'm going to cover this a little out of order from our agenda, but first up I'll talk about the Sutter Gold Mine operation. Uh, they were coming in asking for some changes to the uh, conditions of their use permit on the Lincoln Mine. And uh, this primarily uh, had to do with uh, what I would consider more minor or ministerial issues, but there were uh, some issues that uh, may have an effect on the surrounding area. So uh, the uh, Board of Supervisors has to look at it and decide whether those were considerations that were made during the environmental impact report process. Uh, in looking at the uh, things they were asking for, which was the relocation of the sand barn or the dewatering plant, identification and location of the North Star portal, relocation of tailing, tailings thickener, tailing storage tank and water tank, and transporting up to 15 trucks or 300 tons of tailings per day to the eastern surface fill unit site located on the Swift Schaefer property, which would be um, down Amateur Road, and this would be during the initial five years. I, I think the board really looked at this and um, whether it was reasonable that these were included in their initial application for a use permit, whether it was reasonable that they would have a uh, less than um, significant impact or could be mitigated. And I think the board felt confident that uh, that was the case and uh, it was approved. Incidentally, this will be on TSPN today. Um, uh, Tom uh, Slavik was uh, on hand at the meeting, so there'll be footage of that meeting later today at t on TSPN. Uh, the board, a couple of other uh, big items that we talked about. Uh, certainly the um, state responsibility area fees or tax. There's a lot of dynamics going on here now. Uh, we won't know the outcome until the end of this week. Uh, Friday sometime late into the evening is when the session closes officially this year for our state legislature. The SRA fees, there's a uh, move afoot to repeal those uh, SRA fees or uh, taxes. And I'll just call them a tax because that's what they are. But there's a move afoot to repeal the uh, tax. And the, the catch is that uh, it is tied to passage of another bill, AB or Assembly Bill 1500 by Speaker Perez. This would actually take the single sales factor which is a um, tax on corporations. Uh, right now, they're allowed to choose a number of different ways to pay their taxes. This would move it back to the way it was three to four years ago to a single sales factor. It would increase the tax on out-of-state corporations that do business in California by about a billion dollars. Out of that billion, they would take 90 million, would go to CAL FIRE. Uh, the rest of it would go to um, grants to uh, kids that are going to college who, uh, whose parents earn less than 150000 a year. No guarantee that's going to pass. It's passed out of the assembly. It needs two Senate votes on the Republican side to pass it. No guarantee that's going to happen. But if it does pass, the repeal of the SRA fees more than likely will occur. At this time, we're not uh, telling you to bank on that. You just need to keep abreast of what's going on and uh, surely uh, continue to feel like you have to pay that SRA fee because there is no repeal at this time. So don't anyone out there say that uh, Board of Supervisors told you not to pay your bill because uh, you could get in trouble by not doing that if the repeal doesn't occur. Other items that we talked about, Prop 30 and 31. Prop 30 is the Governor's Initiative, the Schools and Local Public Safety Protection Act of 2012. It's got um, a little bit of money in it for schools, no guarantees. That's why uh, the, the uh, education community in the state of California, including the state PTA, is uh, advocating more for the Molly Munger Initiative, which is dedicated to schools. Uh, they're both taxes. The governor's initiative uh, is a major competitor to the Munger Initiative. Uh, 
Um, the governor states that even though it's not a 100% guarantee, the monies will go to schools, but also there are major tax increases involved with the governor's initiative. There are some constitutional protections for the monies that counties get, but also there are um, personal income tax increases for those earning up to 250, 500,000, and up to a million um, for um, joint filers, that amount would double to uh, the tax would go up by 1% for those earning 500,000. And uh, where was it now? It was 500,000, uh, a million, or two million. So beyond that, there's a half cent sales tax that's incorporated into this, I believe, the, which will go until uh, 2017. So major tax increases. You know, the board's in kind of a pickle on this one because we need the governor's support for things like the basic aid issue where uh, the governor lent us his support this year. That's what helped us get $1.1 million back for the county and the city um, and the cities. So um, unfortunately, in my mind, the vote was three to two. Um, you know, I can't take advantage of the situation and say how bad the governor's initiative is. We took a no position on this because we want his support down the road. Um, sometimes you got to do what's right. Uh, also, Prop 31, the government Performance and Accountability Act, the board voted 5-0 to zero to uh, not support Prop 31. That's all the time I have today, 223-6470 if you want to call the board office. Supervisor Richard Forster will talk to you in a couple weeks. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. And now we're going to be taking you to Sutter Gold Mine's presentation to the Board of Supervisors. We'll go to the uh, project proponent for uh, presentation. Good morning. Good morning. I'm David Cochran. I'm a Vice President of Environment, Health and Safety with Sutter Gold Mining Company. Um, and today I'm here to present the permittees perspective on uh, the um, changes uh, in, the, in the project development plans. And we really look at these as more of refinements because the original permitting is typically done for a project of this order on conceptual plans. And as we've gone through the final design process, we've identified some refinements that we are confident are minor changes and consistent with the use permit for the project. Uh, before I get started with that, uh, I do want to go over and clarify the confusion. Um, I gave the clerk of the board some packets for all of you. It should have the presentation that I'll go through today. Um, we have also included excerpts, uh, much like staff did, from the use permit so that you can um, read the actual documents that uh, we have taken information out of for our presentation. Also included a, a map that we provide to all of our contractors um, because we take it very seriously that we're restricted to use only our access road for access to the project during construction and uh, during operations and we provide that to everybody and you have some correspondence in your file that indicates we're not 100 percent successful um, that doesn't mean we we haven't made a good faith effort and we don't continue to work with contractors and suppliers um, we also have a letter that was left at our office um, from a neighbor it's addressed to the um, Board of Supervisors, and that's a letter from Dorothy Mormon, who happens to live on Amador Road across from where um, our new access road to the Surfaceville unit leaves Amador Road. And the last thing, and you already have a copy of this, I wasn't sure you'd get it, and that's the letter from Downey Brand that um, basically is a rebuttal to Tom Infusino's letter. Um, with that out of the way, uh, if I could have the first slide. Um, the scope of my presentation today is really to uh, address the questions that you see up here and answer them. And if I do a good job, um, we're confident that, that you will be able to find that the changes that um, staff has identified are consistent with the project as analyzed in the environmental impact analysis and consistent with the use permit. Um, Next slide, please. The first uh, thing that we really need to talk about is, is the use permit. And in our view, a use permit is 
basically a uh, form of contract between the issuing agency, the county, and actually uh, the, the permittee or Sutter Gold in this case. And that permit, when the board approved that, um, they showed some real wisdom in, in knowing that a project of our scope and magnitude um, would have some locations and of structures and facilities that would be defined that we would need to be consistent with, but it also anticipated that there may be refinements or changes that occur during the final design, and that if any of those were deemed substantial, that they would be brought before the board for approval. Uh, based on the letter we submitted that's included in the staff packet, we submitted a letter um, identifying those changes. Uh, we didn't feel they were substantial. We made that case and staff um, disagreed with us and it's probably not the first time you've had a permittee and staff disagree. Um, might be the first time today. Uh, however, uh, we believe they are consistent. Um, Basically, um, county staff, after looking at our development plans, found um, four things that are potentially significant changes to the board. And the first three are really uh, location of facilities or structures. And the last one is really the whole issue of uh, transportation of processed ore uh, by truck or the trucked material option referred to in some of the documents versus the slurried material option. And so we've really got two things. It's a, it's a structure location and facility location. And then the second issue is really um, transportation. I've covered some of this before, but basically the, the key thing here, the point that we want to make is that the proposed construction and location is really driven by... Um, We're going to take a break. We'll be right back after this. You're watching Amador County's local television network.